morning. Welcome to the Kunakati Living History Park. My name is Pauline Nishida Miller. I was born and raised about seven miles from here on a coffee farm. I am the eldest of five girls and we are the third generation and we're known as the Sansei. The Japanese people immigrated to Hawaii during the 1800s and early 1900s. They were contracted by the U.S. government to come over and do sugarcane work, which is on the other side of the island. Conditions were very, very poor. The working conditions and living conditions were very poor. A lot of the immigrants ran away and those that stayed, you know, worked really hard trying to end their contract. So they all came over to Kona and did coffee farming, tenant farming. This house is very, very important to me. I lived in a house just like this. And so it's very um, important for me to preserve the house. Mr. and Mrs. Uchida came from Japan and they had five children here. The eldest son, Masao, stayed here with his family until 1994. His children were third generation, Sansei, just like me, and I went to school with them. And that's why it's so, so the house is so important to me, very, very important, and I, I think it needs to be preserved for history's sake. Um, every morning, lady of the house goes to the garden to gather the vegetables for the day. So let's go to the garden, which is located right across the yard here. Okay. We have some radishes here. Radishes, this radish. The, Jap the Japanese um, plant all their vegetables, and it's a very self sustaining life here. All the vegetables are grown. So here's some radishes. And we also have, we also have zuiki, which is the plant here that looks like a taro. And we will harvest some of that plant. And we, we cook the stalk of it and uh, just cut the leaves off. Can I step over? Oh, <laughs> Um, this is a wiki. Only the stem is edible. The leaves and the root is not edible. And it's like taro, where uh, the Hawaiians eat taro and the root is what they make the taro from. But zuiki is edible, only the stem. They all look alike, so you have to know the difference. Yeah. Okay. For protein every day, um, the Japanese eat eggs. They raise some chickens, and so now I'm going to gather some eggs for protein. Okay. So right now I'm going to cook the rice. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to light the fire cook the rice. The wood that we're using is coffee wood. We never ever have to look for coffee wood because when the farmer trims the coffee trees or prunes the coffee trees, after pruning it's all cut up and laid in the coffee field and it's the chore of the children on the house to go out and bring back all the wood to use for cooking and also the bath so here we have it all prepared here 
thing that they ate a lot of rice, rice came in a hundred pound cotton sack. So that sack was very important. Mom made all the clothing from that. Okay. She made blouses, blouses, even the underwear for the men. Okay, underwear for the men. And little school bags for the children. Okay. It was used for almost everything. My uh, apron here, the dish towels, and mom even made the ceiling with the rice bag. And there in the corner, over the kitchen table, you can see the rice bag, and you'll also see it in the rest of the house. So rice bag was very, very important. All the clothing was made from it. Okay. To learn how to cook rice, because if they didn't know how, um, it was said that they won't find a husband. <laughs> They have to know how to cook rice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to uh, prepare some vegetables now. Start preparing some vegetables here. Um, we also had some eggplants here. Radishes. Okay. The zuiki. There's there's a skin on it, so we peel the skin off and. It's, it's like a celery, but it's very, very porous. Um, I have burnt the rice, um, but that doesn't go to waste because the children just love the burnt rice. They sprinkle a little salt on it and crunch away at it. So mm -hmm. I understand that mom sometimes burns the rice on purpose. Once in a while, I need to add more. So this will simmer a little bit and this should get hot enough so we can fry it, make the egg omelet. Really slow. Is the rice pot lid just made from wood? Uh, the lid? Yes. The lid is made of wood. And this pot is called a hagama. It's very old. It came from Japan. Mrs. Uchida brought it with her. Very nice, fresh eggs. We use the green onion, spring onion, and cut a few of it to uh, put in the eggs. The coals from cooking the rice, I'm laying some eggplant on it to roast the eggplants. Okay, we never want to waste the coals. They come in very handy for roast, roasting. Potatoes or corn can be put on it too. So we'll just leave this here for a while and it will roast. I can start making the egg. So this is um, an iron skillet and Mrs. Uchida cooked almost all of the food in this iron skillet. So all they had was the rice pot, the iron skillet, and a little uh, pot there. She used to make stews and anything soupy. <laughs> So not very many utensils, just the three of these. And hot water was uh, put on this uh, heat on these kettles. And so we have our egg. Many times during the day, the whole house will be filled with smoke. So we'll be coughing. There's no vent or anything here. It's just natural here. Mm -hmm.
Did you grow up with a stove like this? Um, my grandma had a stove like this. We we had a kerosene stove like that. So that is a kerosene stove, and my family had one of those. And I think it is ready, so I'm gonna get the zuiki there. So I'm gonna just cook it together with the zuiki. So I'm going to skin it. So roasted eggplant. Cut this off. And we will try to skin it. Soy sauce, so I sprinkle a little bit of soy sauce on this. Get it a little bit of flavor. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think the rice is done. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Not the rice in, in this container. If we want to move that pot, they invented this little tool okay, to move the rice pot, and this is how it works. Wow. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very simple. Very simple. In this case, I'm taking this over here. Oh, the rice is so perfect. <laughs> I'm so proud of the rice. I have some rice here. Now, the first scoop, um, many of the Japanese, almost all of the Japanese were Buddhist, and so, um, we are going to have a little offering for the Buddhist shrine. So the first scoop of rice would go in this little container for the Buddhist shrine. So we'll do this. Once the lady of the house has everything cooked and stuff, she will then make some coffee. Okay. But what did they drink before? They were drinking tea. So a lot of the immigrants who came, they were farming coffee and so they had to learn how to drink coffee also. My family never drank coffee. My mom and dad never drank it. My dad, though, in his later life started and he just loved it. And I drink it now, but when we were growing up, we lived on a farm but never drank coffee. <laughs> so this morning, I'm gonna grind some coffee with a family here. Okay. 
So we have this little grinder that mother mother uses every morning and there's some freshly roasted Kona coffee. For home use, the family uses the iron skillet and roast the coffee on the fire. Okay. So every morning she will grind some. So it's nice and fresh. You can smell it. Okay. So this also serves as an alarm clock. So when the children hear the grinding, it's time for them to get up. Okay. And and those that lag behind will probably smell the aroma of the coffee and then get up. <laughs> okay. So that's how the coffee is made. Nice way to wake up. So we have two um, rice ball and then some eggs. So every day it's egg omelet. Okay. Eggs. And some zuriki. And some eggplant. And I have some. Uh, reddish sticks. So I'll just stick that there, and then a piece of orange. We have bento for the children. For the man of the house, the farmer, he takes this little lunch pail to the farm, and he takes it to the farm, and he hangs it on a coffee tree like this. And at lunchtime, he'll get it and then um, eat his lunch. So on the bottom rice for him Ume is put in here and it kind of keeps the rice from getting spoiled also right mm -hmm. right and um probiotic this is the top section of that lunch pail and we would put the same thing that we did for the children so some egg And as I said, when the chickens don't lay eggs, we hope somebody went fishing. <laughs> and, and as I said, when they go fishing, you know, they, they always share with their neighbors and even vegetables when they have a lot, they will share with their neighbors and in return, they might get something that they don't have. Mm -hmm. And with the fish, they usually dry the fish because there's no refrigeration. Mm -hmm. A piece of orange and sticks of radish. So here is father's lunch. So when he gets up, he, he will take this to the field and hang it on the coffee tree. And the children will take this to school and and they will put it in a little bag made out of the rice bag together with their school books and off to school they go. And, and many, many of you may have been wondering what this is. This is our filtering system. Okay, filtering system. This is a Bull Durham tobacco bag. Okay, and we have a sample right here. So way back, grandpa and dad used to smoke Bull Durham tobacco. These bags were very, very useful for uh, filtering the water. Once in a while, Grandpa or Dad will gift one of the children with this, but you have to be almost a perfect child. Study hard in school, no fighting with your siblings, no talking back to your parents, and then you might be gifted to one of these. And it was really hard to come by, but if you had one, you'd be the hero for the whole year. So. The boys kept their marbles in here, and their girls would kept their little trinkets and stuff. And so, if you had one, you go to school and you'd show off, okay? Because <laughs> you're a hero, you're, you're a perfect child. Okay. So, I never got one. <laughs> <laughs> now, going to the Fudo Bar, which is the bathhouse. So, this is the bathhouse, and this is a tub where they bathe in. It is heated by burning coffee wood on the outside 
and every night um, it was my job to make the furo, you know, and so when I was in the coffee field, I would be sent home a little early to start the furo. And I loved making the fire, so um, it's made outside here, okay, using the coffee sticks. So besides cooking, we use the coffee sticks to heat the bath. We go back into the bathroom, and the bathing routine is getting here, undress, and you would scoop one pail of water, this one pail of water, set it here, and you would sit there and soap up with this one pail of water. Then you would, you're allowed one more pail of water from here and to rinse yourself. Then you go into the tub and soak. So everybody did that. And mom usually goes last, and by the time she gets there, there's hardly any water, and the water is cold. <laughs> the next night, the same thing happens again. And as I said, once, maybe once a week, they'll change the water, and in time of drought, it's used for the yard or for laundry. Now, we're headed to the outhouse. We have an outhouse, it's a two-seater, and at night, when you go to the bathroom, you must take a kerosene lantern. In our family, we always had to be friends before we go to sleep because in the middle of the night, when you get up and want to go to the bathroom, nobody will go with you if you're not friends <laughs> with your sisters. And you know, there's boogeymans and obake. Obake is the uh, Japanese <laughs> ghost <laughs> and it's really scary. So you take a lantern and you wake one of the sisters up and have them go with you. <laughs> toilet paper we didn't have any toilet paper so they used newspaper or the pages of the Sears catalog <laughs> this is our outhouse okay. and it's a two-seater why did it have two seats do you know so more than one person can go. More than one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were all two seaters. The next room is a sewing room. And this is so special because there's a room dedicated just for sewing and ironing. This sewing room. Mrs. Uchida would sit here to do her sewing after she's done with all the kitchen uh, work. Mrs. Uchida would sit here to do her sewing after she's done with all the kitchen uh, work. And we like to think that she took a moment and just sat here and relaxed and enjoyed the scenery. There were no tall trees here, so she could see the ocean and she could feel the trade winds, the sea breeze come and refresh her. So this was a really nice spot where she sat and did her sewing. Did she sew just for her family or did she, or did, would, would they sew for other people too? Uh, oh, mostly for the family, but um, she did sew for other people to make a little extra money. And she even did some ironing for other people too, to supplement their income. Things like blouses were made, blouses like this. Even, even the underwear was made for the men. Notice the rice bag ceiling. They still have prints on them. So we're in the parlor now, and I'd like to tell you about the pictures on the wall. The first picture is of a mountain. A lot of people say that that looks like Mount Hood, okay? But uh, the family here probably saw that picture and it reminded them of Mount Fuji. So they framed it and they look at it and think of Japan, their home, okay? But I think it's Mount Hood in Oregon. <laughs> this photo is a Japanese school graduation. So Japanese school was held after public school you would have to go to another location, usually a Buddhist church hall, and get about an hour of Japanese. And this is graduation. And you can see that they've all adapted to Hawaii because they all have leis on, are interested in education and thought education was really important. Every day after his hard work on the farm, he comes home, he takes a bath, he has his meal, he puts on his little kimono, and he sits here in this corner. He will sit here, and he would light up his tobacco, and he would start reading his paper. 
um, it was very difficult to get news in Hawaii. You know, we're so isolated. But Masao subscribed to the Hawaii Hochi, which came out of Oahu. Okay, this is a 1939 copy, and this is Princess Elizabeth celebrating her 13th birthday. Okay, when Masao read the paper and came across places, he would always refer to his world map and look up the places learned a lot from reading the paper and he really really enjoyed it because this paper also came in Japanese partly Japanese Mr. Uchida Daisaku made sure there was a study room for his children to study initially they studied on a low desk Japanese style while sitting on this cushion called a zabuto and they probably studied this way you know, study but they quickly changed to the American way of studying. They have a desk, a chair, and they even have a typewriter. These are the books that the children used. They were English books, and they kept up with their culture, so there was lots of Japanese books for the children. The children read these books. These are the books that the children used. They were English books, and they kept up with their culture, so there was lots of Japanese books for the children. The children read these books. School schedule in Kona was very different from the rest of the state because of the coffee. So August, we were on vacation because from August to November was the heavy coffee season and the children were needed at home to harvest the coffee. So we were the only ones on a different schedule here in the state and in the late 60s, the school and the community wanted to participate in football because we were never in school during football season and that's what they wanted. So the schedule was changed to regular schedule. I am proud to say that the Konawana High School Wildcats football team, they're always there. They come in their division <laughs> tops every year. So this concludes the tour of the house. Thank you so very much for coming and sharing this with, with me and also for helping with the preservation of this site. It is very, very important for me uh, to have this house uh, preserved in history. It is my childhood. Okay, Things changed uh, along the way and my generation, the Sansei, most of them left the island and went to the mainland for college. So it is very important that I preserve the history of this house. Thank you so much again for coming.